Listen to the recording and choose the correct answer for each question. Let's begin. Listen carefully to the audio and answer the following questions based on what you hear. Write your answers in your notepad or comment section of this video. First, you have some time to read question 1 to 7. The topic of nature versus nurture is always a great topic of debate among people. There are great men who did work hard to achieve great heights. But still, there are some people who didn't work that hard yet still managed to be successful. In other words, it is a debate between hard work and talent. In the grooming of a person, the nurturing is essential. However, still, there are some individuals who were never born in a great environment. Yet, by their sense of knowledge and intellectualism created a special place in the hearts of people. First let's understand nature in this way. Nature has given us many wonderful things in life, and one of the most precious gifts is our talents. These are special abilities that we are either born with or that run in our family. Nature plays a big role in shaping the future of a child, and sometimes, it blesses us with incredible skills that we discover as we grow up. For instance, natural talents in singing. Many famous singers are born with beautiful voices. They don't need much training because their talent is natural. This talent helps them achieve success that they might never have imagined. Take, for example, the legendary singers Lata Mangeshka, Asha Bosle, and Kishore Kumar. They had soulful voices from a very young age and started singing in their childhood. They began their careers early and became very successful without much formal training. Their natural talent made them legends in the world of music. Apart from singing, there are many other talents that nature gives us. Look at the field of science. Great scientists like Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, and Galileo Galilei showed their amazing skills in their teenage years. They had incredible intelligence and curiosity, which helped them gain worldwide recognition. These scientists did not have many mentors or formal education to guide them. They relied on their extraordinary intelligence and strong ambition. Their natural talents led them to make discoveries that changed the world. Now, you have some time to read question 8, 13. On the other hand, the nurturing of a person is important. Because hard work beats talent. With proper mentoring and practice, a person can achieve success in life. If a person has an environment in which everybody is in the same profession and are successful in it, then there is a great chance that the person will land up in the same profession and will achieve heights. Because in that environment he will get proper nurturing. Talent alone is not enough. With the right support and effort, anyone can reach great heights. What is the role of nurturing? Answer is simple. Nurturing is about creating the right environment for growth. If someone is surrounded by people who are skilled and successful in a particular field, there's a higher chance that they will also succeed in that field. For instance, if a person grows up in a family of musicians, they will have access to a lot of musical knowledge, resources, and encouragement. 
This kind of environment can significantly boost their chances of becoming successful. You have some time to read question 14 26. Here is a great saying, hard work beats talent. Even if someone has natural talent, it's their hard work and dedication that often lead to real success. This is where the saying, hard work always pays off, comes into play. No matter how talented someone is, they need to put in the effort and practice regularly to excel. Take musicians, for example. Many of them have achieved greatness through sheer dedication and constant practice. Even well-known legends like Bob Dylan, Lou Reed, Elvis Presley, and Michael Jackson did not become famous just because of their talent. They worked tirelessly, practiced their craft for years, and remained dedicated to their art. This hard work is what made them stand out and become icons in the music world. So. What is the reality of success? There are no shortcuts to success. Every successful person you can think of has put in a lot of hard work to reach where they are. Whether it's in music, sports, business, or any other field, constant effort and dedication are key. Nature gives us valuable talents that can shape our future and lead to great success in fields like singing, science, and more. It's important to recognize and nurture these talents as they are unique gifts that can help us achieve our dreams. Everyone has some talent, and while it might take time to discover, it can lead to amazing accomplishments. Embracing and developing these talents is key to reaching our full potential. However, natural talent alone isn't enough. Success also relies on hard work and a supportive environment. Even if you don't think you have a special talent, dedication and effort can help you achieve great things and make your mark in the world. Listen to the recording and choose the correct answer for each question. Let's begin. Write your answers in your notepad or comment section of this video. First, you have some time to read question 1 to 17. Good morning, my name is Sandy Pabon and I specialize in study of minds. I've been invited here today to talk to you about law of attraction and what I would like to dwell on first is an area that has recently been exercising everyone. And that is how to attract what we want in life. The law of attraction is a powerful concept that many people believe can help them achieve their dreams and goals. It's a simple idea. 
You can attract into your life whatever you focus on. If you think positively and believe in good things, you can attract good experiences and opportunities. On the other hand, if you think negatively, you may attract negative experiences. The law of attraction is a universal principle that suggests that like attracts like. This means that your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs can bring similar experiences into your life. If you focus on positive thoughts and feelings, you are likely to attract positive experiences. Similarly, if you focus on negative thoughts, you may attract negative experiences. Imagine your mind is a magnet. When you think happy and positive thoughts, you send out a positive energy that attracts positive things. If you think sad or angry thoughts, you send out negative energy that attracts negative things. This simple idea is the foundation of the law of attraction. Ladies and gentlemen, the law of attraction suggests that you can attract into your life whatever you focus on. It's a fascinating idea. And I'm here to explain how it works. First, key thoughts become things. This means that your thoughts are incredibly powerful. What you think about most of the time is what you are likely to attract into your life. If you constantly think about success, happiness, and love, you are more likely to experience these things. On the other hand, if you dwell on negative thoughts, you might attract negative experiences. So, remember, your thoughts shape your reality. Next, we have feelings amplify thoughts. Your emotions play a crucial role in the law of attraction. Positive emotions like joy, gratitude, and love can amplify your positive thoughts, making them stronger. When you feel happy and grateful, your positive thoughts become more powerful. Conversely, negative emotions like fear, anger, and sadness can amplify negative thoughts. So, it's essential to manage your emotions and focus on positive feelings. Third, beliefs shape reality. Your beliefs are deep-rooted thoughts that you accept as true. If you believe that you can achieve your goals, you are more likely to work towards them and make them a reality. Your beliefs drive your actions. If you believe in your success, you will act in ways that lead to success. However, if you believe that you are unlucky or incapable, you may not put in the effort to succeed. So, hold strong, positive beliefs about yourself and your abilities. Fourth, we have visualization. Visualization is a powerful tool in the law of attraction. It involves creating a mental image of what you want to achieve. By visualizing your goals as if they have already happened, you can create a positive feeling and send out positive energy. Imagine yourself achieving your dreams, feel the emotions of success, and let that positive energy guide you. Finally, there is action and attraction. While thinking and feeling positively are essential, Taking action is also crucial. The law of attraction doesn't mean that things will magically happen without effort. It means that your positive thoughts and feelings will attract opportunities and resources, but you still need to take action to achieve your goals. Opportunities will come your way, but it's up to you to seize them and work hard to turn your dreams. Now, you have some time to read question 18 to 27. Let's understand how to use the law of attraction. Using the law of attraction in your daily life can be simple and fun. Here are some easy steps to get started. 1. Set clear goals. Decide what you want to achieve. 
It could be anything from getting good grades, finding a job, or improving your relationships. Be specific about your goals. 2. Think positively. Focus on positive thoughts related to your goals. Imagine yourself achieving your goals and how happy and satisfied you will feel. Avoid negative thoughts that create doubt or fear. 3. Feel grateful. Practice gratitude every day. Be thankful for what you already have and for the good things that are coming your way. Gratitude creates positive energy that attracts more positivity. 4. Visualize daily. Spend a few minutes every day visualizing your goals. Create a clear mental picture of what you want to achieve. Feel the emotions of success and happiness as if you have already achieved your goals. 5. Take action. Look for opportunities and take steps towards your goals. Whether it's studying for exams, applying for jobs, or working on your skills, taking action is essential. 6. Stay positive. Surround yourself with positive people and environments. Avoid negative influences that can bring you down. For example, Oprah Winfrey, one of the most successful and influential women in the world, often talks about how she used the power of positive thinking and visualization to achieve her goals. Jim Carrey, a famous actor, also used the law of attraction. He wrote himself a check for $10 million when he was a struggling actor and visualized receiving that amount for his work. Years later, he received a $10 million check for his role in a movie. The law of attraction is a simple yet powerful concept that can help you achieve your dreams and goals. By focusing on positive thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, you can attract positive experiences into your life. Remember to visualize your goals, feel grateful, and take action towards achieving them. With a positive mindset and consistent effort, you can use the law of attraction to create the life you desire. Listen to the recording and choose the correct answer for each question. Let's begin. Write your answers in your notepad or comment section of this video. First, you have some time to read question 1 to 10. Today, I want to talk about a critical issue that affects all of us, the importance of saving water. Water is essential for life, yet we often take it for granted. In this speech, we'll discuss the problem of water scarcity, why it's happening, and how we can all take steps to save water and avoid wastage. Saving water is a responsibility that each of us must embrace to ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Firstly, let's understand why we are facing a shortage of fresh water. One major reason is the excessive wastage of water in our daily lives. Many of us use water carelessly, without thinking about its limited supply. 
Another significant issue is pollution from industries, which often release untreated water into rivers and lakes, contaminating our freshwater sources. Additionally, the use of pesticides and chemical fertilizers in agriculture further pollutes freshwater. Sewage waste dumped into rivers also contributes to this problem, making water unfit for use. Next, what are the ways of avoiding water shortage? Well, there are several effective ways to save water and minimize its pollution. One crucial step is the proper treatment of industrial water before it is discharged into rivers. We should also focus on using only the necessary amount of water in our daily activities, avoiding wastage. Raising awareness about water conservation through social campaigns and educational programs is essential to make people understand the gravity of the water crisis. Now, you have some time to read question 11. 27. Although water covers 70% of the Earth's surface, only about 2.5% of it is fresh water suitable for drinking and other uses. This makes water one of the most precious and scarce resources we have. Here are some practical tips to help save water. 1. Make it a personal responsibility to save water daily. 2. Install rainwater harvesting systems on your rooftops to reuse rainwater for household purposes or to recharge groundwater. 3. Use the full capacity of your washing machine when doing laundry. 4. Water plants in the evening to minimize evaporation. 5. Use buckets instead of showers to save a significant amount of water. 6. Don't leave the tap running while washing your face or hands. 7. Increase awareness about water conservation in your locality, school, and neighborhood. 8. Educate children about the importance of saving water from an early age so they can understand its value. Despite the efforts we have made so far, they are not enough. Water is the most vital resource we have received from Mother Nature. It is not only essential for human life, but also for plants, animals, and birds. The quantity of freshwater is limited to groundwater, rivers, and lakes, making it our duty to safeguard what remains of this precious resource for the future. In addition to our conservation efforts, we need action plans to control water pollution and ensure that our water remains clean and safe for use. In conclusion, saving water is a universal responsibility. By adopting various methods to conserve water and prevent its wastage, we can help maintain the level of fresh water on Earth. Let us all commit to making small changes in our daily lives to save water and protect this invaluable resource for future generations. Listen to the recording and choose the correct answer for each question. Let's begin. Write your answers in your notepad or comment section of this video. First, you have some time to read question 1 to 11.
Good morning, everyone. Today, I want to talk about something that has been an essential part of our daily lives for centuries: the newspaper. Since its origin in the 17th century, the newspaper has evolved into a crucial source of knowledge, keeping us informed about the latest news and events happening around the world. Reading the newspaper is a highly beneficial activity to start your day. It gives us a brief insight into the real happenings in our country and across the globe. For both children and adults, newspapers offer a variety of useful columns such as political news, tech news, editorials, and even puzzles. There are numerous advantages of reading newspapers that should not be underestimated. A newspaper is a treasure trove of information, and with each passing day, it enriches our knowledge. Arriving at our doorsteps every morning, with a cup of hot tea, we engage with the world through the pages of the newspaper, and in doing so, we continuously enhance our vocabulary, reading skills, and general knowledge. Let me highlight some of the key benefits of reading newspapers, especially for students. One, strengthening reading and writing skills. Newspapers are excellent tools for improving reading abilities, making readers active learners. Reading the newspaper is a healthy habit for everyone, especially students. Over time, they gain full command over reading and vocabulary. Moreover, it helps in improving writing skills as well. The habit of encountering new and challenging words daily increases the chances of better comprehension and language proficiency. Two, providing entertainment and sports news. Newspapers keep us updated on various sporting events happening both nationally and internationally. We get information about players, current games, medals, rankings, and much more. Beyond sports, newspapers also provide news about the economy, trade, commerce, and entertainment, offering a well-rounded perspective on global events. Now you have some time to read question twelve to sixteen. Three, enhancing general knowledge. Knowledge, combined with good expression, is the key to success in any examination or competition. Newspapers offer students course-related information, updates on recent discoveries, and the latest inventions. They are invaluable resources during preparation for competitions, contests, and quiz shows, providing unique ideas and current trends. Four. Staying updated with politics. As social beings, it's essential for us to stay informed about the world around us. Newspapers enable us to remain well informed about politics, sports, general affairs, and much more, all from the comfort of our homes. Regular readers find it easier to stay updated on global events. Five useful ideas for research and projects. Students often need to conduct research and work on school projects. Newspapers are a convenient source of fresh ideas, covering recent discoveries, launches, and other relevant topics that can greatly aid in their academic pursuits. Six, improving vocabulary skills. Newspapers often include sections with games like Sudoku, puzzles, riddles, and tongue twisters. Which help in improving vocabulary skills. Daily reading of newspapers exposes students to new words, which they can learn and use in writing essays and assignments. Seven. Becoming a good speaker. Through newspapers, students gain knowledge on various topics, which in turn makes them better orators. This knowledge enables them to participate confidently in debates, speeches, and discussions. Ultimately, boosting their self-confidence. For those learning a new language, newspapers are an excellent resource. 
They are available in different languages, making them accessible to people from various regions. In conclusion, reading the newspaper daily is a valuable habit that offers immense educational benefits. It keeps us informed about world events, local happenings, and much more. Therefore, I encourage everyone to make it a habit to read the newspaper every morning, perhaps with a cup of tea or coffee, and enjoy the wealth of knowledge it provides. Listen to the recording and choose the correct answer for each question. Let's begin. Write your answers in your notepad or comment section of this video. First, you have some time to read questions. Ladies and gentlemen, have you been considering skipping your vacation this year? If so, I urge you to rethink that decision. Taking time off is not just a luxury, it's a necessity for your mental and physical well-being. Some of us worry about missing out on promotions, falling behind in our tasks, or even the financial strain of planning a trip. It's easy to see why so many people hesitate to take a break. But these concerns, while understandable, shouldn't keep you from using your well-deserved vacation time. Let's begin by understanding what vacation time really means. In the workplace, vacation time is a designated period where employees are entitled to take a break from their daily responsibilities. It's more than just a benefit. It's a crucial part of maintaining a healthy work-life balance. It allows you to rest, recharge, and return to work with renewed energy and focus. Now, why is taking a break so important? Here are a few key reasons. First, getting relaxed, recharged, and refreshed. The most obvious benefit of taking a holiday is that it helps you recharge. We all need time to refresh, and one of the best ways to remain productive is by stepping away from work. Holidays teach us how to relax, a skill that's essential for managing stress down the road. If you push yourself to exhaustion, you may become distant, less caring, and bring these negative emotions back to work. Disconnecting fully from work, even if it means no emails on the beach, allows you to unwind and recharge. Second, show your value to co-workers. We all know someone who thinks the office can't function without them. But I say, prove it. Take a break and let your co-workers handle things in your absence. This not only gives them a chance to appreciate the work you do, but it also trains them to manage without you. So, stop feeling guilty about taking time off. Your team will manage just fine. Third, help you get that promotion. It might seem counterintuitive, but skipping vacations to climb the corporate ladder faster can actually stall your career. Studies show that employees who take time off are more likely to get promoted and receive raises. Perhaps it's because those who feel justified in taking a break are also less stressed and more confident, qualities that contribute to their success at work. 
Now, you have some time to read question. Fourth, helps your health. Not taking a break increases the risk of burnout, sleep deprivation, sickness, and even depression. Stress is linked to a host of serious health issues, including headaches, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. Taking a vacation isn't just about enjoying time off. It's about protecting your health. Fifth, not taking a vacation could cost you in the long run. Many companies have a use it or lose it policy regarding vacation days. If you don't take your vacation this year, you might lose it entirely. Remember, if your vacation is a paid benefit, it adds to the overall value of your salary. Not taking those days means you're missing out on a benefit your company provides to keep you healthy. Sixth, stimulate innovation. When your brain can think clearly, Productivity and creativity soar. Taking time away from work helps refresh your perspective, often leading to new ideas and solutions. Bill Gates, for example, is famous for his Think Weeks, and many other successful people have come up with their best ideas while on vacation. Who knows? Your next big idea might just come to you while you're relaxing on a beach somewhere. Seventh, a short break can be as good as a long one. You don't need a month-long vacation to reap the benefits of time off. Even a short break, a weekend getaway, or a staycation can help you recharge. What's important is that you take time away from your regular routine. Remember, don't spend your vacation running errands, that's not a break from stress. In conclusion, Taking a vacation is not just about enjoying a break from work, it's about enhancing your overall well-being, improving your productivity, and setting yourself up for long-term success. So, whether it's a short getaway or a long holiday, make sure you take the time to relax, recharge, and come back stronger. Listen to the recording and choose the correct answer for each question. Let's begin. Write your answers in your notepad or comment section of this video. First, you have some time to read questions. Good evening everyone. Today, I want to talk about a topic that affects each of us at some point in our lives, exams. They are a central part of our educational journey, shaping our learning, goals, and even our future. But what exactly are exams, and why are they so important? What are exams? Exams are formal assessments designed to evaluate a student's knowledge, skills, and understanding of a subject. 
they are typically conducted at the end of a term, semester, or course to measure how well students have grasped the material. While exams can be nerve-wracking, they serve as a benchmark for academic progress. Let's have a look on the history of exams. The concept of exams dates back to ancient times. The first known standardized exams were used in China around 605 AD during the Sui dynasty. These imperial exams were designed to select government officials based on merit rather than birthright. The idea eventually spread across the world, evolving into the various forms of exams we see today. Why are exams conducted? Exams are conducted to assess learning outcomes, identify strengths and weaknesses, and ensure that students meet certain educational standards. They help educators evaluate the effectiveness of their teaching methods and provide a structured way for students to demonstrate their knowledge. How many types of exams are there? There are several types of exams, each serving a different purpose. 1. Written exams, the most common type, involving essay-type questions, multiple-choice questions, or problem-solving tasks. 2. Oral exams, these involve answering questions verbally, testing a student's understanding and communication skills. 3. Practical exams, used in subjects like science, art, or engineering to assess hands-on skills. 4. Online exams, increasingly popular, these exams are conducted digitally and often include adaptive testing methods. 5. Standardized tests, uniform tests used to compare performance across a large group, like the SAT or YELTS. Why are exams important? Exams are important for several reasons. They motivate students to review and reinforce their knowledge. They also provide a sense of achievement when goals are met and help identify areas for improvement. For society, exams are a way to maintain educational standards and ensure that individuals are well prepared for their future roles. However, exams are not without their drawbacks. The pressure to perform can lead to stress, anxiety, and even burnout. The focus on rote memorization rather than deep understanding can undermine true learning. Additionally, exams may not always accurately reflect a student's abilities, as factors like test anxiety and different learning styles can skew results. What is the future of exams? As education evolves, so too will the way we assess learning. The future of exams may involve more personalized and adaptive testing methods that cater to individual learning styles. There could also be a greater emphasis on continuous assessment rather than high-stakes testing. Technology will likely play a significant role, with AI-driven tools helping to create more dynamic and flexible evaluation systems. In conclusion, while exams have been a cornerstone of education for centuries, they are not without their challenges. As we look to the future, it's essential to explore new ways to assess learning that are fair, comprehensive, and supportive of all students. Thank you. Listen to the recording and choose the correct answer for each question. Let's begin. Write your answers in your notepad or comment section of this video. First, you have some time to read questions. Hi, good morning. My name is John. How can I assist you today? Good morning, John. My name is Emily Parker. 
I heard you offer car rental services. Yes, we do. We have a variety of vehicles available. What type of car are you looking for? I'm looking to rent an SUV for a weekend trip. We need a vehicle that can comfortably seat five people and has plenty of luggage space. We have a few options that might suit your needs. Our Ford Explorer and Toyota Highlander are both spacious and ideal for long trips. When were you planning to start the rental? We're planning to pick up the car next Friday morning and return it on Sunday evening. Let me check availability for you. Yes, the Ford Explorer is available for those dates. Would you like to go ahead and reserve it? Yes, that sounds perfect. Can you also provide information about any insurance options? Of course. We offer a full coverage insurance plan for £20 per day, which covers any damage, theft, or accidents. Would you like to include that? Yes, I think it's a good idea to have full coverage. Great. I'll just need a few details to complete the reservation. Could you please provide your driving license number? Sure, it's DL8586462120. Thank you. And your contact number? My mobile number is 07891234567. Perfect. The total cost for the rental, including insurance, will be £180. We require a £50 deposit to confirm the booking, with the balance due when you pick up the car. How would you like to pay the deposit? I'll pay with my credit card. Excellent. I'll process that for you. All done. Here's your reservation confirmation. Thank you for choosing our service, Emily. Have a great trip. Thank you so much, John. I'm glad I found the perfect car. I'll see you next Friday. Goodbye. Goodbye and safe travels.